As of yesterday, the number of elders and care facility staff in the territory with active cases of COVID-19 was 10. The numbers are shared between the Cambridge Bay Continuing Care Centre, the Arviat Elders Home, the Joe Haven Continuing Care Centre and the Igdulik Continuing Care Centre. Of those 10 cases, one is an elder. All positive staff are at home in isolation until recovered. I'm happy to report that recoveries from COVID-19 continue at Embassy West in Ottawa and fewer than five non-Nunavut resident elders at that facility have active COVID-19. I'd like to thank all our home and continuing care staff for their dedication and strength in the face of adversity. We are also working closely with the Department of Justice to manage the outbreak of COVID-19 at the Iqaluit Aqeumabbik Healing Facility. As of yesterday, there were 45 cases of COVID-19 at the facility, 30 inmates and 15 staff. As our Premier just mentioned, I'd also like to encourage everyone to continue following public health restrictions. Please take advantage of the vaccination clinics that are upcoming across Nunavut or book an appointment to get your shot. Let's all get vaccinated and reduce the risks from COVID-19 for our families, our friends and our communities. What not? I'd like to start off by commending the Nunavut who are doing their part to prevent the spread of COVID-19. I realize that this is a very difficult and lonely time, but I would like to remind you all that you are not alone. All government of Nunavut employees and their families can access counselling through our Employee and Family Assistance Program in any of Nunavut's official languages. It is free and confidential. All you have to do is call the toll-free number at 1-800-663-1142. How you may go to Matamanats or not to Matambalo inu to Yamaksunikis and Ekamena Cosino to Minati. None of the government can get a canayak thing it ilang illu, a twin a harum nato, Inuleria Gutinic, Ekanayak in Ilagino, Luica Uti, Ika Uti, good, Nunavu milk housing, Ilisaria or Simayo Atokta Gunatoti. Akihang it took a malo singing not to Sasau Jang it took to Sakau Jang it took. Ohala to Nara have to deal as it to Maki Hangi one eight hundred six six three one one four two. In the workplace, we need to follow health and safety procedures for the well being of all public servants. Updated health and safety guidelines have been posted on the Government of Nunavut's internal website and distributed to all Government of Nunavut employees via email. We recognize the increased risk of infection from the Omicron variant of COVID-19. As part of our commitment to safe and healthy workplaces, we would like to assure all government of Nunavut employees that additional measures are being taken to prevent exposure to the virus. The health, safety and wellness of Nunavut is our top priority combining the best information from trusted sources with expert knowledge of our frontline staff will allow the government of Nunavut to continue providing sustainable services while protecting its employees. Malaga Haratana, Hamangi Tolerina Mulu, and Tomate Namulu, 
Balita ko yao sa mayo na kanoy tayo kung lugi ka pa makikana yao tingin. Nataang ko yao tayo sa mayo kanoy tayo na mulugan na pumi tayo na mulwato agay sa kaya tayo sa mayo na nabuga pa makungita kahit sa yao kung kaya kahitingan ni tunay ko tayo sa maluti lugi kana yao tili mano gawa makungita kahit sa yao kung tito ang bios maluti. Kaya magtata tayo tama na lugi na pumi na sa yao nga kanin maguto ako na ang nga nubat yao na nine nineteen omicron ng nga tayo yao. Elagi ya ulo natsu ko tiga ya tayo ulo na pumita ilitit si nang may kana ya bio yun ni nalo na yabigi ko maya buga ba makuya kana ya tili maangi ta ko ha kani nga ko hanu ilo ay ako tayo yata man na siya magbuta ilikulugi kana ya bingin ni hanu ilitit tayo ni it ulo ay na pumita ilitit tayo ni ilo nuna bumiot si bulio tin na pari gatigo kada sok tayo ulo tig ta ko tukisig ay ako tili bio na pa sule yogi yatin ni Kau yang mai tam ni lo, kau yang mai yau yun eh kena yau titi no tak kau nuna buka apa mak kongi sule kau yang sigo terharum nang nang ngata, pejit serah pejit serah runa nang mo sapu jisin nalo dia kena yau titi ni. We must regularly assess safety procedures in the workplace, and adjust as necessary. Government of Nunavut employees in Igloolik will continue to work from home until the public health measures for the community are amended. All other Government of Nunavut employees may return to their workplaces. However, offices remain closed to the public except by appointment. We continue to encourage supervisors to support hybrid schedules for their employees to balance work from home and work from office to reduce exposure and transmission between staff. This measure will remain in place until February 11th. Lastly, and most importantly, I would like to mirror what our Minister of Health and the Premier have been requesting. Please get vaccinated and get your booster shot to reduce the risk associated with COVID-19 for yourself for your family, and most importantly, for the overall safety of, of your community. By getting vaccinated, you're helping to keep the people who can't get vaccinated safe. Nakumi. Kau yang sakit dan lalu kata kau yang sakit di gulung kau nak temui dia di sini memalik dia kau yang semua yang kena yang benar aku yang tahu kata lalu di lalu dia mengira kau tak. Nuna boga ba makungin ni kana yak tingi iglulig ni suli iglulig mi kana yak na ato ang kami ni tako malita ug ali kasuyaw lang ni ni nuna ganne asilima ni nuna boga ba makungin ni kana yak tiyo tiro na tiyo kana yak bigin no ulumi kasi ani lita ko ala be suli matuman ni ato kikutuin na no upat ako na iluti kasi ani ni chale os maluti suli ko juig ang ina ko ang yak kaya yak yunik ika yak suli hulugit Ulo siu tingin ni kana yak tingi tate mana le mugi ti siu na hulu gang kami ni ambalu kana yak bingin ni kana yak unang tingin ni siu amak biute le hulu kita ko kana yak ti tan malik tau gai le tan yak tok February eleven monun kini ulo pa milu pin mau ulo pa hulu ni lo kapi yau hat tarit si ambalu pin ayu ani kapi yau lo si kapi yau si magut si kayo ni awat si tamak ko kapi yau gunang itu lo ay nak temi ti le ti tau gunang hulu gai um, I'd like to remind people today of the uh, isolation rules and how they relate to uh, rapid tests. Through the GN, there are a number of rapid tests that are going to essential workers or being provided to travelers returning from southern Canada. Some people are also purchasing their own tests. It is important to understand that these tests do not replace isolation and they do not shorten isolation. If you are under an isolation order or are isolating because you have COVID-19 symptoms, you must complete the full isolation period. Rapid tests are not as reliable as PCR testing and there is a higher risk of a false negative. 
This means if you leave isolation early, you increase the risk of spreading COVID-19 to others. If you use a rapid uh, test, uh, please keep the following in mind. If you test positive, call the COVID-19 hotline at one 975 8601 If you test negative, remain isolated until you haven't had symptoms for at least 24 hours and anyone who feels sick should stay home. Wala sa kut kaitit siya ako mayong hulo may tako ani teliga ham na mumalit daw galin ni hanulo to ang mga tatako ng akila miyuk ko kaw yis ako tiyo yun. Yun ang buga ba makung itigo tako isulit daw yung hatu ti hatsiyo ni akila miyuk ko kaw yis ako tiyo yun. Tako ng ikanaya ka halang ito no tuni yao si mayut amalo tuni yao hatap to titiki palya yun no halo na ni nga ato no tamang ano na bumbo. Ilang ilo tako ay mininiw ka hatap to tako ni ang ikamikaw yis ako tiyo yun. Pin makayo buk to kasi umaga ham di siya ako ay kaya sa tago tiking yung bigo tao ng matani tayle ko yao si manangmik ang balo na ilig ay si gutao jang ng matani tayle ko yao si manangmik ani tayle ko yao si magovit where am I nuba jo anak to magovit ang balo na kanu gutao magovit tako at ang yato ni ani tayle ko yao si manite ta nagya halaga itatin kaila mayo yuk ko kaya sa gutio yuta ay mag Tamang nagsaw ka tanga at ako nung analo na yata ako tila tano kaw yisaw tinut tako at tamang si matuwi na katagay hangata tamang na tukilik ani sa kay tuwi na ani sa kay nagwit ani tayo ko yao si malutita ay maulog ay nakto may tisyo tuwi na kay habis sa maksimum na ng mundo bago na nineteen asinno tako ay kila mayo yuko kaw yisaw ti ato ato na ako tiyok tamang na hano ingit to kisa ni ako yung kaw magyalis eh Tay mahawi sa kuti ko na luna ay kubin na budya na to ham ng nut tay na halaga ay harat chau ti gayak to tit unga si tuma ka kang ito one eight 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 nine seven five eight six zero one ng balun ba juan na to hangin na kato kubin mahawi sa kuti ko suli ani tay liga hap to tit hanoi ko to halaw unni to ay kubin kisika ikakani twenty four ni kina tuwi na hani makuni ang kasama in the lagayeli. Symptoms can vary uh, between individuals and depend uh, on the variant of COVID-19 you have. Um, for many people, Omicron creates milder symptoms than other types of COVID-19. Uh, these include runny nose, headache, fatigue, sneezing, and a sore throat. Um, for other variants of COVID-19, the symptoms include fever, cough, loss of taste, and smell. This is why we are asking anyone who feels sick, even if it seems mild, to stay home and isolate. If you have COVID-19, stay home for seven days if you've been vaccinated or 10 days if you haven't. If after the isolation period you still have symptoms, remain isolated until you've been symptom free for 24 hours. Um, as of today, there have been 13 hospitalizations associated with this current wave of COVID-19. Thank you. Tako ano iguto yung nato ano matsima yun ano jige hatang yung mata amalo ano ito ni ano ba juan ng 19 pedyo tigilo. Tano mi kwan ng nato yung ano ilo ako tiyung inersa o hatag to asing ni ano ba juan ng 19 ni ilagi yao lute kakili hatag lute. Nah aku nggak hatta lutik, tak kamu ya hatta lutik, tak dia hatta lutik, kamu malu iya lu hatta lutik. Asing ini nubat jauh nang nineteen, tak kuat jadi ini tu tak kau emai tu inau nang majut utang nang hatta lutik, kau eksok hatta lutik, mama saru nai lilo tik, kamu malu nai gun nai lilo tik. Tapi mai mata aku aku nak tu inau kanim masuk itu aku ni, kanu ilu kanu ilu aku tu ya ni kalu aku ni, angin kasi mai nari ale, ane tay lilo ni. Nuba join up nineteen Harovit and your Kasimaga Hap to the Ulunik seven Nick, Kapiao Simagovit, Ubalo Ulunik Hulinik, Kapiao Simangi Kubin. Taimani Taylor who yao Simani, Anigoralo Akat, Hanui go to Harovi Suli, Anni Taylor Gia Hap to the Hanui go to Halao Nero because I need a cani twenty four and Anigo Nalita in Naraya to the Ulumimut, Takoa thirteen, Anna Valonut, Unitsima Yuitamana, Selma Palea, Lawan in Nova Joanna, nineteen.
Uh, Kent Driscoll, EPTN National News. My question is for Minister Gross. Uh, Minister Gross, I got this question from a student in Baker Lake who wanted me to ask this to you. Quote, uh, Baker Lake has a high number of COVID cases, and because of the COVID cases in Baker, we have 50% capacity at the school. Many students don't have access to laptops, and many assignments have to be typed. When are students of Baker Lake going to have access to the laptops and devices? Because we need them now. Is the Minister of Education aware that the laptops and devices are not yet distributed to the students? Quanta for the question. Um, I wasn't aware about Baker Lake students not receiving their laptops or their devices, and each school has um, their own system and um, we can look into uh, inquiring on the status of when the students will be receiving those devices um, and figure out what's happening and um, work to assist in any way possible. Uh, Minister Gross, last week on Friday, your department announced late in the afternoon that classes would be returning to 100% Nikaluit starting on Monday. Now, right now in Nikaluit, four teachers didn't return to the high school after Christmas, so they're short there. Two buses are down, forcing more overcrowding on the busing. And I'm getting reports that at least one school in Iqaluit will be cancelling some classes this afternoon due to short staffing. As well, I'm getting reports of teachers who spent all day yesterday on the COVID hotline unable to get through, finding out whether they should go to work or not. My question is, why go to 100% attendance facing all of those significant obstacles? You talk too fast. Minister Gross, Billy Bissin Alone, Silla, one hundred per cent, Milton Nana, I look at Halo Nailin Nara or Namning in Nut, Sitamat, Lilinar, the Chedi Utter, Utila, with Duigo, Marco Bassi, Pung in Narta, Luti, Ilinar Billo Taco, Nosa, Matinam Narta, Yakana Yarti, Kissam Nicum, Willang and Ne, the Kanayati, Lutaco, Halagas or Dominique, you are at Taruna along with Dut. Quanta for the question. Um, I'll defer that to Dr. Patterson. Thanks. Uh, the decision to move the, the to move the Calouet schools in the Calouet to 100% was uh, through public health. And it's related to um, best estimate of risk of transmission or risk of exposure in the schools. Um, with that said, in every community, or it, there's always the uh, potential that uh, staff who are exposed outside of the school will uh, be unable to work creating uh, logistical problems for the schools. Sell my beauty in the air, humming in the Illinois bean, 
Public health point of view, the reasons for closing schools or limiting access would be where having students attend increases their risk of exposure. Uh, and then there's the logistical reasons where there's just not enough staff to run a school appropriately or safely, like not enough substitute teachers. And that's a that part of the decision is up to the school or the district educational authority. Hi, can I have an update on if there are any current outbreaks in the territory, including any potential ones in daycares or schools? And can I have some details too, please? Names and such. Oh, and uh, Steve Silva with CBC. <laughs> We can provide that offline. I can't list them all off on the top of my head, so. What is the government telling families who live in overcrowded uh, homes? Like my colleague Toby reported on a family of 11 living in a one bedroom unit, for example, and there is, and they are, uh, there is a positive case there. What's the message essentially to families who are in this kind of situation? And is there a new plan for people in this kind of situation? Yeah, there's, there's no doubt that the housing challenges in Nunavut greatly increase the risk, not just for COVID, but for all communicable diseases. And, and that's a factor in um, tuberculosis and, and others. The challenge is that in the vast majority of cases in a in a overcrowded house, by the time one case has been identified, there's already been spread, and um, moving people around. Uh, does not change the ultimate outcome in most cases. When we identify situations where uh, alternative isolation will make a difference, we uh, act on it sometimes in the middle of the night. Um, but otherwise, in a situation where somebody's diagnosed and they've already been exposed in an overcrowded house, um, the best option uh, is to stay where they are and we support them in isolation in that unit or house. Oh. 
elänniku unnua kutako nuuta hatta sema jo hatto kesän eli taako hawi jo jo hatti lugu nuva joana to hamni nu taako sama biu sema li hatta ngata illu me hatti gi gasau galo hatti lugu tema nu tailing tillu ga ka na sa tu na hatta tu ka yo sa tu na lu tillu ange pangin ni ami taili tillu gi I'm going to the Canadian press. With 30 inmates tested positive for COVID at the jail, are there enough spaces for them to isolate? And if there aren't, what's the plan to ensure they can isolate? I'm going to Canadian press. I'm going to go to the 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 Yes, thank you for the question. I'm very, I'm, I'm equally concerned with our, with our clients in, in our healing facility. Uh, thankfully, we this, this new facility has allowed us to have a special wing for for those that are uh, dealing with COVID. So um, there is space uh, in, in terms of se separating those with positive case and those without. Thank you. Uh, next question is probably for Dr. Patterson. With cases continuing to rise, and we've had this is the mo most amount of hospitalizations we've ever had. I'm wondering why you're not changing restrictions. Well, we still have fairly tight um, measures. Um, unfortunately, not everyone is following them. Um, and that contributes to some of the spread. Um, I interpret that part and then I'll carry on. So let's talk about Malita Ogele, Hasuja Ogele, or some Luangi Tugalo, Kisani, Taiko, Kikulima, Malingin, Nuking in Nula, Iluna, Malingin, Nuking in Nutamana, Sama Palia, Lahil Guta, Sahatanga, Taikunga, Nalangitunu. The other part uh, the, the, uh. to consider is Omicron's, uh, the, this new variant is a, um, has been a game changer around the world. And um, if we went back into another um, lockdown, similar to what we did just before Christmas, um, that would, it, Omicron's not gonna be gone in two weeks or four weeks so we go into lockdown and stay there for another month um, we will have the similar event with a spike in cases uh, as we come out of that lockdown um, what we can do is give individuals the tools to manage their risk as much as possible masks vaccination uh, support in isolation and uh, monitor the workload on health centers and on the medevac system and hospitalizations and intervene when those are going to be overloaded like we did in um, uh, Igloolik. And when we see individual, oh, sorry, let me add. Nunajua <laughs> Kesiannya 
Amiga lingi kalo ang mga tatamak ko, kung ata yung kuto ay zamdak tuko, kuto ay hatagali. Tay matay na kaya sa kasi magatigo iglulik mi kano kano ipalay ni ini. Sorry. Um, and when we spot, uh, so two other things. One, when we spot outbreaks in specific settings, do what can be done to uh, stop that transmission um, and also protect those who are most vulnerable, like elders in congregate settings. <laughs> Mathis Sarvi, Radio Canada. Just to follow up on this uh, pre previous question. So with the cases increase, increasing and the measures pretty much not changing at the moment, is that pretty much what it's going to look like to live with the virus on an ongoing basis in the future? Mathis Sarvi, Radio Canada. Not necessarily. The, uh, the, case, the absolute case count is not that reliable of an indicator of what's happening in the communities um, and not necessarily an indicator of the risk to individuals in the community. They might travel laying it to Galoa, Stako, Hachilla town in a fidgeting in Lugan, Aluna, Tosaman in Nikuino, Naluna Rutung in my Nunal in Hanui Latar, New Unica Malolo, or an after me with a happening in me. We, as far as what happens when this wave is gone, it depends a lot on. Um, a number of things that nobody can accurately predict at the moment. So, um, you know, the plan right now is to follow those indicators that we talked about earlier and um, uh, respond appropriately to minimize the risk to Nunavumiut. <laughs> Um, why is the GN requiring people who already had COVID to isolate another time when they've been exposed to the virus? Summa Nunavo Gava Makuniani Taylor, who you what a Makuninga, Nova John of Tarir, Sima Yumino Galani. It depends on the time from when they had COVID uh, in the past. Um, people who had uh, previous variants of COVID, so if you had COVID in September or October or back further than that, your reduction in uh, the the reduction in the chance of you getting a new infection is dropped by only about 20%. So uh, that's why previous variants do not provide much protection against Omicron. <laughs> Nova Joan of Takandiru Nangata, twenty per cent to two Nanganitako, Sapumio Simagun Nangata, Tame Matako, any tail who you can listen to it, Tamanalo, Omicron, Pilongo, to Pijuti Lu. Trevor Wright, none of it news. Um, I, as of the last uh, update, I guess, uh, Igluic has a fifty four per cent, uh, five plus full vaccination rate. Uh, how is that factoring into the spread we're seeing right now? King of Lapan, Elatana, Trevor Wright, Novo News Company, Lulik, me fifty four per cent to Nangigo, Capio Simon Matahano, Tamanatu in a house of Mambasa, Makpala, the Union. It's contributing to the spread. How much is hard to know at this point? 
Uh, uh, next one's probably for Maine, but um, <clears throat> the uh, radio stations and mission information have been mentioned before. Are, are there any particular communities where we're seeing more information than others? Misinformation? Uh, yeah, uh, radio mm. stations. Are uh, Trevor, um, Trevor, uh, Nunali <laughs> Nunali ilangit ni kami ho ni kat kapijau himang ni mangata tu kehini dulu lupa makade kapiju tau yu yaktok huling itu ni okau he kaktang ni uk tu tau yu luar tu igluli ugon nak tu luar he ni ilagi jau yu yaktu tabu na thanks for the question Trevor I think um, Maybe one of the best ways to answer that question is to look at the vaccination statistics. And we do have uh, certain communities where there's a, a, a lower, much lower number. And I am inferring that misinformation must play a role in those cases uh, when we have facts that are being provided, repeated and repeated. And there is a lower uptake in certain communities. Um, my feeling is that misinformation is a, is a part of it, and unfortunately, Iglulik appears to be an example of that um, based on what I've heard from uh, community members. And it's just, it's just really sad when you think about it. It's, you look at the vaccine and you look at COVID and what it does to people, and I, I see the vaccine, I see like a life jacket or a seat belt. Like who is out there telling people not to wear life jackets when they go in the boat? That's unfortunately what we have when people are saying, don't take the vaccine, don't take the vaccine. It's, it's a personal choice if you choose not to wear a life jacket when you go in a boat, but then to be going around and telling other people, don't wear a life jacket, don't wear a life jacket, that, it's, it's really sad um, from where I sit. Oh. Uh, life jacket, uh, David Ben and Natsiak News. Uh, I believe my questions are either for the um, Premier or the Health Minister. Uh, earlier this month, um, the Premier said that Cal Elders Home would be open at the end of January. Can we get an update on that? David, Nunatsak News Kuni, Takipigalisati Lugu, 
I'm happy to report that as of January 31st, it's officially opened. And so uh, we will be making an official announcement to that effect. Um, but the, the staff are in place at the facility. Uh, the work has been completed in terms of renovations. Thank you very much to our partners at Nunavut Housing Corporation for that side of things. And I know the, the Premier is uh, looking forward to uh, an official announcement regarding that uh, reopening. Is there a timeline for when some elders will be brought back and is COVID affecting that timeline at all? Hang <laughs> Um Ottawa So the the uh, first resident will be admitted tomorrow and following that there will be a resident admitted every week until the uh, seven beds have been filled and that there's a combination of residents uh, returning from out of territory and also from in territory. Uh, COVID is uh, affecting the, the process. It's, uh, it's affecting all parts of our lives, frankly, at this point, but I can't say specifically how, how it's affected the, uh, the El elders home and uh, residents going in there. Uh, Kent Driscoll, APTN National News. I'm pretty sure this is a Dr. Patterson question. Uh, I've received information that many grade 11s and 12s in Iqaluit were sent home due to potential exposure at the school, but their families are not being told to isolate as well. I'm wondering what sort of like can you put on that on a a lot of high school kids being sent home and then the instructions for the families of those kids. Kent Risco APT and Kuni to Sassima Yotako, Elin, Nelly, eleven, me twelve, Milo, Tako, and Katuina Simona, Sugitako, Nova Joan, or Tulimi, Katisi, to Inara, Hatomini, Nera, Tolu, Tailin, Nerbimi, Ilangi Lotako, and it daily Huya, Gatitako, Elin, Nerti, Hano Litamana. So there, the students were exposed at some point last week so they're considered contacts their family the people that they live with unless the students have become symptomatic or um, then the, their family are contacts of contacts and we never isolate people in that situation or almost never because uh, otherwise we'd all be in isolation <laughs> Um, Minister Cross, please. Uh, Minister Gross, your department announced late on Friday, it was 421, that the schools were going to be opening 100% in Iqaluit on Monday. Now, teachers had already prepared, a, prepared for this week of split shifts coming up. 
and they had to spend their weekend now working to be ready for Monday due to the shift in plans. I'm wondering, why was the decision to reopen the schools on Monday either left so late on Friday or simply announced so late on Friday? Minister Grass, talk on Alan and Tolo, what I tell them in me four twenty one more till the will it now be hundred per cent and near Halo Nematuila learning in Nagacha or cut. Tacqua between Nangu Nella or Halo to take a call, can I have to give on the similar real water? Some making about to Palo Lunita, Quanalun and Tolo, Nagaja, me at Tangu to me, Matuila. Kind of for the question, um, that was a decision that was made in consultation with the Department of Health, the uh, uh, CPHO, and the decision, I believe, is announced on Fridays, um, whether there's going to be a uh, school opening or closed. Um, and if it was to happen, um, if it was to be announced at a later date, um, you know, the question would be, why are we opening at a later date um, if it was a few days ahead? Uh, but there was the weekend to prepare and we have been preparing for this for a long time for uh, COVID. We've been, you know, managing with COVID in various situations and each community has uh, different uh, measures in place and uh, we are going on the guidance of the CPHO. Tako <laughs> I will add that this was informed earlier in the day, um, and sometimes the announcements take a while to go through translations and so forth for those PSAs to come out. But um, the school was notified beforehand that there was closure. Closure? Or sorry, exposure. Hello, Steve Silva with CBC. This question is for, I think, Dr. Patterson or perhaps the minister. We are told that the community of King Knight had very few students attending classes this week, under 20 elementary school students, uh, to be exact, apparently. What can you tell us about the situation there in regard to cases or outbreaks and how that's affecting attendance? Specifics, please. Steve, CBC, Abati and La Tungani to Hanuilo to Hangatavani, Sama Pala Yohanga, Taco, Pangilo, Hataka, Illinati, Illinati. Off the top of my head, I'm not aware of an outbreak in the school itself. There will be some children isolating from exposure at home, and there will be some uh, whose family are, uh, their parents are choosing to keep them at home. In regards to having to wear masks in public um, and in other situations, uh, are there any plans in the works to require people to have to wear um, masks that are more protective like we know cotton masks cloth masks aren't as um aren't as great as say an n95 kind of mask um, are there any plans in the works to require those versus cloth masks for example i don't know if he's blocked 
Pangmasi mayo hakka tamakko mato hanui tu ge hanning in sul N95 la jo su tamakko sapum mi jo gutau nak sai tu ne khakta la manga ta hanu no plans on changing that we do you know we recognize that N95s work better than medical masks than cloth masks but um, in terms of mandating specific masks outside of high risk settings no there's no plans on changing that Emma Tranter, the Canadian Press. Can you give us an update on the situation in Igloolik and what is being done um, now that the community is on lockdown? Emma Tranter, Canadian Press. Can you give us an update on the situation in Igloolik? Staff are continuing to test and uh, trace and support people in isolation um, and uh, monitoring those uh, who are infected for severe illness and, um, and supporting them as required. <laughs> Can you give us an idea of the average age of people who are infected with COVID-19 in the territory? Not off the top of my head, it ranges again. We've had uh, children younger than a month and we've had people over 80. Um, 18 months? Under a month. Oh, Radio Canada. My question is for Minister Gross. How are the schools going to navigate the unregular students and even teachers' attendances? with um, the number of people having to isolate at the moment. Anna, for the question, um, I think each um, situation that we have uh, across the territory is different for our communities. Um, we've had communities in the past who have had COVID and I think um, have had that experience of how to navigate through these times and we have new communities that have had new exposures and new um, things happening to, to learn um, how to deal with COVID but there is um, a lot of information that has been given to staff to um, ensure that we have the right, um, I guess, requirements and um, we have staff and we also have substitute teachers, but we continue to monitor the situation of schools and staff and the number of capacity um, that we have. Okay. Malaga, Lingin, Tokisu, Machar, Lugit, Kanayak, Dinud, Amalo, King of Building in Nut, 
خاوي يسقل لها هنا وناقة بودا وتم قوي قنا يعطيك تسلوا قل لها قنا يعطيك تسلوا لنجي كلوا مناطة. So um, right now we've seen our numbers in each community changing and situations in communities changing with school closures. Uh, in some instances, we've had DEAs closing the schools um, and it depends on the situation in each community and our numbers are fluctuating. Um, so, uh, you know, we're just going with um, each day and taking it day by day and right now um, the tree of disseminating information is that schools do communicate with their uh, families if they're anticipating any closure um, and we've had instances where if there is a closure sometimes they go on radio the DEA or the principal um, and announce that uh, right away. Atuni ino na lin nasa jokpal na nangata ilang imato yao sa mahatag sutik ilang iluta ko na tuna lin nilin na tulagay ko kati mayeng imato sa mahatag sutik ilin na abin ni tako alo hatse yun yao sa jokta na sutik tako luta maasa jokpal na nangata tuna yao kaya mahatag ngin na tutil lo tuin na tutil silo tilo tu kasi gaya ko tinig nere upata mato yao ham na ni ngani kamalo mato yao ham na kada ko na lao tingi tigo nuna lin ni an ilin na tulagay ko kati mayeng ibalo ilin na binya ng yung kahangi to sa kitsa katakdwe. I believe my next question is for the premier. <laughs> Sorry, I believe my next question is for the premier. Um, we're seeing the cases rising and more people are in isolation. Is the GN doing anything for um, employees who have to isolate but can't work remotely because of the nature of their job? Thank you for your question. Uh, I'll defer that to the minister responsible for human resources, uh, Minister Lightstone, who's been working extremely hard on this particular point. Uh, but before I do, I just want to mention as well to the previous question in terms of the elders facility here, uh, we've been working extremely hard to, to bring back our elders. And that's something that as a new government uh, is really pleased with the mandate that came when we came from uh, uh, Cambridge Bay. Uh, so we've been working and I just want to acknowledge the leadership of Minister Main as well as Minister Kwasa as well as we work through uh, reopening the facility here. So I very much look forward to the official opening uh, in the next uh, little bit uh, with more detail. And so I just wanted to mention that before I pass the floor over to Minister uh, Lakestone. So, uh, yeah, uh, uh, Minister Main, I'm a Minister Kusuwa, Ipigusutu, Asuwa, Hasimai Narata, and the Rutiapongatana, Mapotel Nerningan, Nalunetian Napo, Kanga Mapotel Latasiman Nerninga, to some Matitian Napo Gutana, to some Nizariman, and the Winia Pabutan, the Manda Manama, Mapopadian El Raticum, so Huyanan. Thank you for the question, uh, Ms. Harvey. Uh, the government of Nunavut is uh, extremely uh, supportive or as supportive as possible uh, to uh, encourage our employees 
government of Nunavut employees uh -huh. to do their part to help prevent the spread of COVID-19. Um, and when it comes to employees who are uh, required to isolate the government of Nunavut early on in the pandemic, created a special leave uh, specifically for those who are under mandatory isolation. And this uh, special leave is um, available to all employees and uh, does not uh, uh, credit any of the employees' current uh, leave banks. It's not credit. Doesn't uh, take away from it. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. Like only Miss Harbin, Nunavugava Right. Uh, news, uh, uh, Trevor Wright, Nunavut News. Um, uh, question, just one question for Dr. Patterson. Um, uh, you, you previously mentioned uh, rapid tests do not uh, replace isolation. Uh, you also mentioned it in other pressers. Um, are, are people using it to skip isolation? Like, um, are you seeing cases where that's happening? Yeah, we, we are. We are seeing where uh, some of the introductions over the past few months have been people who've been exposed in the South, tested themselves with a rapid antigen test, and then said, well, the test was negative, so they flew home. Um, we've had others who have been aware of exposure in the territory and tested themselves and said, I didn't think I had to isolate because the test was negative. And that obviously contributes to spread. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. That uh, concludes our uh, COVID-19 media conference today. We'll have another one on Thursday at 11 a.m. Once again, a reminder that as of this weekend, we won't be reporting the numbers uh, on Saturday and Sunday, but we will be updating the uh, num numbers on Monday. Saturday, Sunday, Nagajami to Sakti Singa Hatalodi.